Channel 5, they used to have this thing called the drive-in. So I used to see a lot of Shaw Brother movies, uh, Ocean Shore movies, and things of that nature. So what you you always will see is um the guys practicing these forms, and then, you know, they go out, get revenge, but they, you know, whoever got killed in their family or whatever the case may be. So I was thinking like that. I said, okay, well, you know, I'm going to study this, you know, martial arts, and then, you know, Chinese martial arts, you thinking you just learn these sets, and then, you know, you want to be able to whoop some ass, but that's not the case. You know what I'm saying? And why not? And then I got, you know, I just got involved with Sifu Rudy Curley Jr. He was like one of my first instructors. He used to be like, a black dude in um, Southside, Jamaica, Queens. And why not? Everybody was talking about this dude that never catch a cold and all this type of shit. Like, you know, internal martial arts, he do the fire elements, things of that nature. So I was introduced to him through this dude named Justice. He's a five percenter and why not? So he was like, yo, you got to come check out this brother. At the time, he was known as name. So he was in um, Basie Projects and why not? So it, it's, Basie Projects at that time wasn't like, you know, all, you know, uh, nice and where well, you could just walk through it easily. You know what I'm saying? You had to be from that neighborhood and why not? So I went to see him and he didn't look like a fighter to me. You know what I'm saying? Because my brother, you know, he used to fight a lot. You know, he'd been in straps and things of that nature. So I knew. You know, looking at this dude, he looked like a like a bookworm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, this dude don't look like no fighter. And you know, he started telling me about Chinese martial arts, Tai Chi, Bagua, singing. And when I first seen it, I was like, come on, man, you can't fight nobody like you know with that slow movement shit. You know what I'm saying? But it was different, man. It's not like today, man. Today you see a lot of people. They try to use a lot of uh, how can I put it on you know, Chinese terminology. And why not to try to, you know, like they'll say, oh, uh, let me see this, like uh, push a uh, breast knee, uh, play guitar, all these fancy names, man. But in reality, from what I, from my experience, I'm only speaking on my experience. Some people get mad when I tell them the truth. I mean, a lot of that shit ain't going to work unless you really put it pressure tested. You feel what I'm saying? And when I got my ass kicked plenty of times, I ain't got a problem saying it because that's the only way you can learn. You know what I'm saying? I, I learned fighting people off the streets first and why not? So a lot of dudes, they, they rhythm is unpredictable. Street fighters rhythm is unpredictable than, you know, your common martial artists. You know what I'm saying? And they got more of a, uh, how can I put, a more mentality to try to really do, do you some harm. It's not, it's not personal. It's just, that's the way it is in, 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 in urban communities. Guys is going to try to knock your head off or they're going to try to suplex you. I mean, I've been singing that shit before the MMA came on the scene. Cats was getting suplexed. They may not even grab And even when they was ground and pound, cats used to do that all the time in the hood. But, you know, they gave it names now. They say, oh, yeah, ground and pound. But it's more of a science when it comes to mixed martial arts because they're using um, judo, Brazilian jiu-jitsu. And, you know, I used to think the shit was bullshit because, you know, when you come in from a kung fu background, you know, it's biased. They be like, oh, you know, that shit is bullshit. It ain't going to work, this and that. So, you know, my thinking was like they think until I expand my mind. Then, you know, you have to jump out of the fishbowl into the ocean to fuck with some sharks. You know what I'm saying? Then you start to realize that, oh, a lot of what they saying ain't true. You know what I'm saying? It's a science to that shit. Just like if you're on the ground on your back, you got to know how to feel your opponent. You got to know how to read them. You know what I'm saying? It's the same shit like in push hands, but it's just a different concept. You on your back. You know what I'm saying? And you can't leave your joints exposed to anything and that. And they say, there's a lot of shit I had to learn, man. I had to read. How can I? I had to troubleshoot. Like, you know, when you do a computer troubleshoot, you had to troubleshoot your shit. You had to reprogram yourself, man. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of cats don't are scared to do that, in, in my opinion. And Chinese martial arts, they think they go to, I've been in China like, what, three or four times? I just came back before the, pandemic happened i was in shanghai and shit I, but you know i ain't paid for it you know i just went out there got a trip but my point is they're not evolving dude that's the problem they don't evolve they're too scared to evolve and they're scared to get hit man you, if you can get punched in the face you ain't gonna never really know what it is to be hit or or, or taken down or somebody on top of you 200 300 pounds on your ass and you don't know how to move and you're trying to figure out how to get the fuck out of that position you have to be in that position. You, I mean, that situation, I should say. You know what I'm saying? A lot of cats don't do it. So when I see all these tapes, man, it's, it's ridiculous to me because I'd be like, yo, listen, man. Like Wang Chun, you see cats fighting. I see some of the clips you be sharing, <laughs> sharing on your channel, and these motherfuckers are standing flat-footed. I'm like, yo, I'm not saying Wang Chun is, 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 is ineffective because it's effective. 
I mean, it depends on the person behind the style, and they have to be uh, uh, mixing it up with other fighters. And I'm not talking about fighters from your same school. You know what I'm saying? You got to mix it up with people that don't do what you do. That's why I was always taught from Chen Sao Ping. He's a Chinese dude from Beijing. He used to always tell me that. He said, yo, listen, you want to get good at Bagua, you have to mix it up with people that don't do what you do, and you're going to lose a few times because that's part of learning, man. You got to understand yourself. That's the only way you can't understand yourself by losing. So that way you can strengthen yourself. You know what I'm saying? So you see all these Bagua cats, you see all these Wing Chan cats, they be getting, they be getting tossed, beat down, or whatever the case may be. And why not? Because they don't have an understanding of the fundamentals, man. And if they don't really understand them, so they don't really know how to punch or strike, things of that nature. You know what I'm saying? It's just like when I came up with Man of Stand-Up, I just came up with Man of stand because a lot of Kung Fu guys, you know, at the time, they was running in their mouth. I used to get in debates with them. They used to be like, oh, you know, uh, MMA and karate is bullshit. So I said, all right, whatever. You know, they do forms. I used to go to these tournaments. Every time I went, I didn't feel like I achieved anything because – it was just forms. You know what I'm saying? You're doing forms. Anybody can shadow box, man. Muay Thai, karate, anybody can do that. Boxers do it too. You know what I'm saying? So shadow boxing is shadow boxing. But with the Chinese, they take it to a whole new level with the shadow boxing shit. You know what I'm saying? They be like, oh, well, you know, you got to do this form. And you, and then they try to criticize you about body mechanics and, and all this bullshit. You know what I'm saying? But then when you see them mix it up, they can't deal with the free and spontaneous. That's why I always say free and spontaneous. I can do a, do a technique and it look good if a motherfucker throwing a slope punch at me or whatever the case may be. Let me see you get my, my, my philosophy is this is what changed in my way of thinking. I said, yo, fuck it. I'm going to see what you can do against somebody that ain't going to let you do what you want to do. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? And that's how I always train now. I used to train that way back in the days. I used to do the little pre-arranger. That's the way I was taught. So I had to reprogram myself, man. And why not? Like, a lot of guys think they're they going to see Bagua look like a movie. It's like one clip you put on. I think, who was it? It was my boy, Ben Hill. He was fighting um, this dude named Nat Neasy. And why not? He was a Muay Thai practitioner. Now, Nat Neasy, I give him respect. He won the fight, but he wasn't that experience of a Muay Thai fighter. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yo, he, Magnesi beat him with basic fucking techniques. He did a scrapping, a, a fucking jab, right hand, and then he did like a, a roundhouse kick, and why not was a, a leg sweep, and why not? They have the same technique in Bagua, but Ben Hill, the problem with him was he didn't train for that fight. See, a lot of people don't know the, the, the whole story behind most of these this uh, man of stand up fights. I know, because I know who organized the shit. Magnesi had a beef with Ben, just like Ben Hill fought this brother named... Um, the dude name Light Burley. He was a 52 cat. And why his, that was his first fight. And why not? You really don't see that fight because that fight was whack. You know what I'm saying? Both <laughs> of them are fucking whack. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna keep it real, man. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I was, I was, I got involved in shit. So you know, because Ben was my friend, people wanted when I when I before I got on Iron Rain, they all come at me. They're like, oh, oh, you know, BT, I want to fight BT. This is like, like I never said I was a master, never claimed, but I ain't scared to throw down with nobody. Look, when I'm doing this interview. I'm still at the same fucking location. You know what I'm saying? And why not, Jerry? I'm at the same damn location. I ain't got a problem fighting anybody because I've been took many ass kicking, so I know what an ass kicking is. The, what they have to prove, are they skillful enough to give me an ass kicking? That's, the, that's what it comes down to. You know what I'm saying? But not to go off topic, the problem is Ben fought these dudes. He wasn't trained, man. He know He's a knowledgeable dude. He knows his Bagua as far as intellectual shit. You know what I'm saying? History shit. You know what I'm saying? But it comes down to actual uses. You got to get in that cage. You got to fuck around, man. None of these dudes did what I did. Man, I had to go in the cage on the east side. It was the only cage on east side of Manhattan that had an MMA cage. And anybody can tell you I used to fuck with all the MMA dudes. And when I used to fight them all the time. That's how I got better. My teacher didn't teach me how to use this shit. I fought it because I used to fight with these dudes. I knew what an underhook was, a single leg, and why not. I knew what full mount, side control, and all that shit was. Then you want belly. I, I learned it because I had it done on me. You know what I'm saying? So then I got up with my man, Peter Storm. Peter Storm is another dude. He used to do underground fights. And why not? UCL. He used to do a lot of underside fights. This dude named Sean Obasi used to fight in a lot. And why not? You know what I'm saying? So I cats just don't know, man. I used to hang with the best of some of the dudes in New York City that used to actually fight. So that changed my way of thinking. I'm not trying to shit on Chinese Kung Fu. I like practicing it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I think it's, you know, good for exercising and, you know, building up your health. But if you want to fight with it, 
then you're going to have to engage with people that don't do what you do. And that's the only way you can really develop skill. You're not going to develop no chi or any of that nonsense. I used to believe in all that shit, man. So I started fighting. Then I studied um, Sandow in 2000. And why not? Lee Tai Ling, he's another dude that brought some Beijing cats, some sand, professional Sandow fights. And why not? And they taught me how to fight, you know, punching and kicking. That's how I know how to punch and kick. So I, me, I'm always... I'm always an open book when it comes to learning martial arts. You know what I'm saying? So I never, at, at this point in my life, man, I don't even put my shit in a category. People like to do that. They're like, oh, you know, why, why, sing to me, all this shit fighting is fighting. It's all universal to me, man. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, if I palm you, if I punch you, it all goes on the same line, <laughs> same path. You know what I'm saying? So it don't make no sense. You know what I'm saying? To say that you, uh, you this type of practitioner or that, you just a martial artist, man. Now, the whole key is can you change and adapt to fit the situation you feel what i'm saying and that's what a lot of people have to learn how to do it's the same shit with the um like like with uh mm i mean not mma but um man of stand up that was my whole goal my whole goal was i didn't want to hear about all this talk you know what i'm saying i let you do your form but then you had to fight so a lot of those dudes i think i was telling you in the email i said a lot of them dudes was novice you know what i'm saying when I first did that shit, shit was like, I think like 10 years ago, maybe 10 or 15 years ago. That shit is long, man. Wait, when I first started, like some people I seen read coming, they're like, yo, where the ropes? I never had an idea like that. My whole shit was just have a space and y'all going to fight. You know what I'm saying? I ain't thinking about no goddamn professional ring. I'm going to keep it real with you. I wasn't thinking like that. So I understand some people, I wasn't thinking about that. I was really, I really, if it was up to me, they would have had no gear on and none of that shit. And people could tell you, I didn't want it. I didn't even want gear. I just want you to get in there and fight. You know what I'm saying? And that was my whole thing. That's when I started to realize some of these guys that trained for so fucking many years, part of my English, I know I'm cursing like, They trained for so many years in, 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 in Kung Fu. I have to say Kung Fu because this is the world that I was raised up in. You know what I'm saying? And why not? A lot of these dudes, they couldn't fight. So this is why I had to start messing with the MMA guys and the, and the Muay Thai guys. You know what I'm saying? To help, it help my skill advance. And why not? You know what I'm saying? Because I wasn't getting it in the Kung Fu community because every time I go there, they want to talk about, I mean, come on, man. You know how many forms I know? I mean, forms is nothing, man. I mean, yo, I want to really, my whole, my whole goal was to try to get this skill. I kept reading about all this Bagua, Singy, Tai Chi shit. So I was like, okay, I want to know how they, how they really get this skill. Or is this some shit, some folktale type shit? Because I'm reading this shit. They be like, oh, this guy, he waved his hand and he throwing the guy around. That's why that dude, I respect that dude. Uh, what's his name? Mad Dog Shoe. I respect that motherfucker highly because I had the same way of thinking. And I said, you know what I'm saying? I like him even more because he's Chinese. If I was a black guy that did it, then it would have been some racist bullshit. But now, now it's a Chinese dude doing it. They ain't got nothing to say. They're like, oh, that's the, he's being disrespectful. No, motherfucker. He exposing the truth. A lot of these guys been singing this shit for the longest, man. I be seeing some of the guys he wanted to challenge. I wanted to see him fight them because they all was talking like the chin style guy. He, I seen him with the fucking video with the wrestler. He touching them and the motherfucker flying back. I'm like, come on, man. Come on. I'm from an urban community. I know a setup when I see it, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know you know it because I be laughing with some of the comments you be making in your damn video. I just be laughing because you Chinese so you can get away with that shit. But if I do it, I'm I'm racist. You know what I'm saying I'm like, oh, I'm disrespectful. I'm I'm not humble and all this bullshit. So I gotta be, I have to accept bullshit to be humble. I'm like, come on, man. That's what it is. There's a lot of this shit is bullshit, man. And why not? That's why I don't even waste my time going to China no more, man. I had dudes that I trained. I'm not gonna say their name. They couldn't fight their way out of a wet paper fucking bag, Jerry. But they come back here. And acting like they masters, man. They're like, oh, I'm a bar bar master now. I train with such and such. I'm a lineage holder and all this shit. And I, I know all the terminology. I even speak Mandarin now. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, but if you put them in the ring with somebody, they get waxed, Jerry. I'm telling you, man. So it's just fucked up, man, the way that the Chinese arts is today, man. And then, you know, they all getting upset because they losing. Yo, if what they need to do is evolve change their way of training. That's all. I mean, they got techniques in these these routines or what they call the Tai Lu. They got a lot of all that shit, but they're not training it properly. You know what I'm saying? They're not even mixing up. They just want to take your money. They come up there. Oh, I'm going to teach you this form. I'm going to give you a certificate and I'm going to let you set up. I'm going to let you set up shop in America. Then they bring the other dude to do a few workshops and make money. <laughs> I know the game, man. I've just seen it over and over. But if you ask them a question, say, yo, let's spar. Like, 
like that Muay Thai guy. I forgot his name, little short dude. This motherfucker actually sparks. That's how I want it to be in Wild Wild. Motherfucker come see me. I ain't got a problem sparring him. Know what I'm saying? Because I got confidence in myself. If I get beat, I get beat because the dude was better than me. Know what I'm saying? That's how you got to think. But these dudes don't want to think like that, man. The Tai Chi, the, the, the Wayne Chung. I'm like, come on, man. I give Wayne Chung credit. At least they try to step up in the bar. Wow. I'm saying, I say, put it that way. Even the Tai Chi, the Tai Chi try to step up and they got demolished. Remember, they supposed to be, uh, what is it, Supreme Ultimate Fist and, and, and neutralizing four ounces to flex a thousand pounds and all that nonsense. But when it came to actual fighting, Jay, they couldn't fight, man. I could go on and on, man, but I ain't yeah. trying to, you know, yeah. I know motherfuckers no. going to be um, <laughs> You talk such truth, man. I, I can tell a story, too, very similar to yours. Um, yeah. I had a friend who also I used to train Kung Fu with, and he went to China for a few years to train in China. He said it was the same thing. All these masters yeah. who even trained on national teams, they thought they were such badasses. Yeah. So what would happen is they would go and start fights in clubs and bars and get their asses thrown downstairs, and then they'd get up and be like, no, I'm okay. My kung fu training protected me from getting hurt by getting my ass kicked. So that's how they justified it. Even though they got their ass kicked, I still didn't get really hurt. The kung fu protected me. That's a lot. how a lot of those masters justified getting their ass kicked in bars when they started shit. Nah, you're right. You're right. This is why, that's why, yo, I don't argue. That's, that's why I was telling you, I said, I really don't be on YouTube like I, I, I used to be years ago. Because it's like, yo, after a while, man, you just be like, man, I remember this older cat. He told me, he said, yo, when I was doing man up stand up, he told me this shit. He said, yo, watch, well, you want to want to walk away from this because it's just too much politics, too much bullshit in the game. Nobody's really trying to seek the truth and why not? See, I can speak on Kung Fu because I've been around and I've seen so much shit in my life, man, with these people, man. It's, it's fucking like hypocrites, man. It's like, yo, you want to seek truth. I, I, I'd be love to go to some shit in Beijing and train with some motherfuckers that can really show me. You know what I'm saying? And why not how to use this bagua? But when I went up there, man, I was waxing dudes with just a jab. I was like, yo, so I didn't want to be disrespectful. I'm a black dude in fucking Beijing, China. Fuck, I look like trying to knock an old man. I don't know what I'm saying. And why not? I've been there three times. And why not? And I'm like, yo, after that, I said, yo, I'm not wasting my time no more. I'm staying my eyes in the States and just train with a lot of MMA guys. And they helped me get better. So I started seeing it. And that's when I came, uh, Bruce Kivo. Uh, MMA Confidential. He's another dude that helped me. And why? he's like, yo, why don't you organize your own shit? Because I really, the idea came from Peter Stone. I used to see him do the undergrounds. So I said, yo, you know what I'm saying? I should do some shit like that for Kung Fu, try to help these guys get better because they never had a, a, a arena where they can really, uh, really test themselves. You know what I'm saying? And why not? So that's how it really came about. Then I was watching that shit called Fight Club one night and I was like, oh shit, I started thinking. And I said, yo, you know something? I'm going to make this shit look real grimy. You know what I'm saying? Like that. And it, and it worked. It got me inside Kung Fu, all that crazy shit. All these guys wanted me to be on TV and shit because I did like some Def Jam shit, like off the video game Def Jam. I had a DJ and he was just talking shit, whatever. We was just making jokes and why not? And it just came like a lot of cats wanted to come. A lot of people was like, oh, I don't want you. That's not going to work. But people wanted to see them fight, man. Motherfuckers getting confidence. Some people was training, but as you can see, they, they, everybody is not professional. If you're not a professional, it ain't going to look like look, what people want to want to see. You're not even me. I'm not a professional fighter. man. I don't get paid for that shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I know how to handle myself. That's why I told people. I said, it's not going to look like a movie. You see these people walk in a circle and you think the motherfucker going to walk around you and do some fancy looking shit. It's not going down like that, dude. I know. I try. <laughs> I'm saying why not? So I had to. You have to modify. What you doing? You know what I'm saying? You have to be close. You got to know your distance. You know what I'm saying? That's the problem with a lot of these, these Kung Fu guys. They, they fight a southpaw and they go to the fucking left hand. I'm like, what type of shit is that? I'm like, yo, I've been seeing some of these dudes get knocked out. The last one you posted was a mad dog shoe fighting some Tai Chi dude. This motherfucker stood there. And all I swear to God, all I seen mad dog shoe do was a jab. No, he did a front kick backed him up on the fence and then did a fucking jab and punched him in the eye with the left hand and then this motherfucker quit. I said, I couldn't believe it, man. I was like, yo, I, I, I had to turn this shit off and, and walk off for a while. I couldn't believe this shit, man. I like, yo, then he made an excuse talking about the sun. I was reading the shit. He was talking about the sun was in his eye, all type of bullshit. And then it happened to be the same case he fought in. I was like, yo, he was training motherfuckers. I seen a previous video somebody had he was doing all these techniques in the same cage. He got his ass kicked in. So how the fuck you want to say you're not used to the cage? 
I see this is the excuses why Kung Fu gets a bad rap, man, because you got cats out here fronting like they good. Like that first duty for he doing smacking a watermelon and shit. I'm like, come on, man, with a fucking bird that couldn't take flight. I'm like, come on, man. And people, yo, it's sad because a lot of Americans, believe it or not, they believe in this shit, man. I ain't going to front. I used to believe in this shit because I used to read the Tai Chi classes. I read all that shit. I used to believe in that shit. I was like, oh, this shit is the shit. Then one day I remember this guy in Kifu kicked my ass, Puerto Rican cat, Golden Glove cat. Fuck me up. I was so fucking depressed. I couldn't believe it. I was doing, I think I did like three or four years of training. This motherfucker just caught me with a jab, hook, and dropped me. And I was like, yo, you know what I'm saying? I got changed the way I do things. You know what I'm saying? But I used to believe in all that shit. I used to read all those books, man. I could say, talk about a lot of cats' books I used to read that are supposed to have been so-called masters. You know what I'm saying? These dudes not in shape. I ain't saying you got to look like you like motherfucking Hulk Hogan or some shit. But I, what I'm saying is you got to be in shape. You got to have stamina and endurance. You got to at least know how to punch and kick. I'm like, come on, dude. None of this shit is taught in Kung Fu, man. None of it. What they show you is a bunch of uh, 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 songs and shit. They be like, oh, you got to read the songs and the classics. I know, man, I've been through the whole shit. That's why I just be talking. That's why I told my boy, just show me. I don't want to hear no more talk, man. If you do Bagua, if you do Tai Chi, if you do Sing Yi, just like the Sing Yi shit, I seen the shit on the Forbidden, uh, uh, what was it, the Great Wall of China. The guy fought up there, fought some little Wing Chun guy. I don't know if you've seen that clip. That shit was in the back. Yeah, yo, you, you, should, you should do a commentary on that shit. Okay. <laughs> Look that shit up. There's some sick versus Wing Chun. These dudes are fighting on top of the Great Wall of China. This dude supposed to be a grandmaster, and he was bum rushing the dude, man. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? I said, what happened to the splitting and the crushing and all that? But I was like, come on, man. And Cass used to try to criticize me, man. I was like, come on, son. At least I fought real motherfuckers, man. I ain't going there and be on some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? It's just a straight bullshit, man. The game is bullshit. Oh, I saw. <laughs> I, saw I know what you're talking about now. It, it was an episode of Kung Fu Quest, right? There you go. There you go. I seen that shit. And yo, they showing you all them doing this nice looking shit. They had this little skinny guy supposed to be doing the monkey and shit. I'm like, what the fuck is this shit? I'm like, yo, come on, man. They got to This is what I mean. I'm not trying to hate on China. I love the Chinese art, but I'm just like, yo, man, y'all got to start representing better than this shit, man. The only people that can fight in China, in my opinion, is the standout dudes. You know what I'm saying? And when I went there, no motherfuckers can bang. You know what I'm saying? If you try to, if you up the level, they're going to up the level. You know what I'm saying? That's how I learned how to punch a kick. You know what I'm saying? When I was down there, I was training with them motherfuckers. You know what I'm saying? I start, I, when I went back, I didn't train with traditional Kung Fu guys no more. Because I was like, if I'm going to train, it's like, it's like having a, uh, uh, how can I put it? When you train with them, it's like, okay, I want to learn a bunch of forms. <laughs> I'm saying I'm just going to learn forms. I think they're good at that. They can teach you the technical shit, how to move your body, rhythm, coordination. But when it comes to that real time, dude, they're not training that no more, man. I don't know when they were training, to be honest. But I'm just like, yo, I don't, I, I seen one with 1950. So I'm saying if they was getting their ass kicked in. The white, I think it was Tai Chi versus White Crane Master. I was like, what the fuck is this shit? I was like, yo. You know, people like to, yo, I'm just telling you, yo, Jerry, people like to run that bullshit on you. They be like, oh, well, they, they're not training like back in the days. I'm like, okay, so I went back. I'm like, what did I see? That shit looked like some, some fucking uh, schoolyard fight. I'm like, what the fuck is this? Worse than that shit. Yeah, yeah, you see. Yeah, you remember. And then I went back even further. You see the Taiwan. They talk about, oh, go to Taiwan. Look at the, the Taiwan. I look at this shit. It looked like a straight street fight. I'm like, yo, come on, man. Shit is bullshit, man. Only shit I've ever seen is real good. I have to give them respect. It's the uh, full contact karate when no motherfuckers used to fight. I think they call it Ko Koei Shin or whatever the fuck them dudes. They they bring they they be banging. I, I try to give Chinese kung fu respect. The only shit I give them is Sandow. Sandow, they get it in. You know what I'm saying? And why not? They can get it in. I think they mod because they modified. It. You know what I'm saying? They have to. You can't just be fighting somebody thinking you want to do some Tai Chi shit on somebody. Fuck out of here, man. Even Bob Watts, why I be like, yo, my shit is modified, man. I don't be doing no mother. You think I'm going to walk a circle on your ass? You will come here and I'm going to try to walk a circle on you. I'm going to try to palm strike you, nigga. It, it don't go down like that. You know what I'm saying? You got to use that shit like a jab or a, a, a hook or whatever. You got to change the way you're thinking because the movements in the in, in, in the talu is totally different than what you want to see in the actual fight. Somebody free fighting you is totally different. The rhythm is different. The aggression is different. That's another thing. No one really grabs you like how somebody would really grab you in the actual fight. 
they do these techniques and they'd be like, yo, oh, do this if you grab me. Who the fuck gonna grab you nice and easy? Not around my way. You know what I'm saying? You try that shit in my hood. See what happens. You know what I'm saying? No one grabs you like that, man. So you got to change your way of thinking on how your approach to martial arts. And then you got to take in consideration it ain't just empty hand because some motherfuckers ain't going to fight you. Not from where I'm from, they're not going to fight you. They're going to pull out the burner. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Word up. There you go. They, that's, what they, that's why they say over in my way, they say the gun is the king and the knife is the queen. You know what I'm saying? So you got to be aware about that shit too because some people know you know something. They ain't trying to do, throw hands with you. You know what I'm saying? That's another thing that's lacking in Kung Fu. They don't talk about that. They be like, oh, well, you know, you do this. They're always doing this fucking do this, do that. What happened if you're in the elevator or you coming up the steps? You know what I'm saying? You could be outside. You got to think about today, man. You know what I'm saying? That's, I mean, back in those days, that was in them days when they didn't have airplanes and shit. You know what I'm saying? Now we got technology, man. This is another thing. So you can't just be running your mouth talking. You, you can do this and you can do that because now we got fucking camcorders, all type of shit. You know what I'm saying? That's why people can expose your ass. If you front and like you a good martial artist, then people could come see you and they're going to be like, oh, this motherfucker, he talk a good talk, but he couldn't handle me when I was throwing some basic shit at him. Now, I've seen that happen to a lot of dudes, man, especially on the east side. I ain't going to say their name, but a lot of them got whacked. You know what I'm saying? Dudes I used to look up to, I seen motherfuckers get take down, get in that mount, got body slammed, couldn't transition, nothing. That's when I said, fuck, then I'm gonna learn some cat wrestling and all that shit. You know what I'm saying? So I add that to my repertoire. If I get you to the ground, I'm gonna arm bar, I'm gonna do whatever I need to do to win the fight. And that's what you gotta do. You know what I'm saying? I don't know, Jerry. Shit is crazy. I'm just thinking about all this crazy shit. That's why I don't even fuck with the Kung Fu really too much. I don't even teach Bagua like I used to. I just teach a few cats. And I tell them straight up, I like, yo, you want to get good, man. You got to go around, hit the bass or nothing. These dudes don't do no pad work, no heavy bag training. So how you know when you hit somebody what it's going to do? You know what I'm saying? How do you know? You still guessing. I, I mean, one teacher told me, oh, you just hit the air. I'm like, really? I'm like, come on, man. You develop energy. You don't have to body mechanics. And they, they really believe in this shit, man. Well, <laughs> they really, I used to believe in this shit, man, until I started fighting, man. Then I was like, yo, you know something, man? This is some bullshit. I like Kung Fu, man. And I see why so many people left. You know what I'm saying? And why not? Because there's not really that many good instructors. And, and why not? A lot of these dudes, man, and even the good ones, they, they incorporate other shit now. They have to. You know what I'm saying? You have to. It's not wrong with that if you're a martial artist. That's what you're supposed to do. Fuck, you're supposed to stay like a fucking uh, 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 limit limit and, and boundaries on yourself. It don't make sense. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, people who's crazy, dude. That's why I tell you they're crazy. And we know a lot of cats, they taught that shit. But when they got in that man of standard ring, they got exposed. And some teachers, yo, they got exposed, man. I mean, yo, they got exposed. That's why some of them used to get mad at me. Get mad at me, motherfucker. You was going around saying you was a grandmaster. You wanted to fight. I remember one teacher wanted to fight a, a, a fucking novice student. I'm like, what? I like, and the dude whooped his ass. I never forget that shit. It's on my channel, matter of fact. <laughs> I'm saying, never forget that shit. I knew the kid that whooped his ass. Cat only trained six months. And when I whooped this dude ass, made him quit, I said, damn. I was like, yo, that's when I really start thinking. I said, yo, this is sad, man. This is fucking sad. So this is why the Chinese arts is the way it is today, man. So all these people criticizing, they have a right to criticize. You know what I'm saying? And why not? I'm not even upset about it. You know what I'm saying? I'd be like, yo, you can only criticize what you know because a lot of these people are beginners. Some of these people, they studied 10, 20 years. They never had a fight in their life, man. There's people like that, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Never been in a fight. Never been in a free sparring situation at all. Never sweat. Never got banged out. Never got slammed. But they telling you what they're going to teach you to do. I'm like, come on, man. It's hypocritical, man. This hypocritical. I never would do that, man. I tell people, if I, I only teach what I know I can do, man. That's it. I don't go no further than that. You know what I'm saying? If people like it, they like it. They don't. Keep it moving. And I keep it moving. You know what I'm saying, Jerry? So, you know, I think it's good what you're doing because a lot of people are now seeing even more. You know what I'm saying? They seem like 
when you see it, you know, some people, you know, Kung Fu cats, they, I mean, there's a lot of cats hit me up, like, oh, yo, Val, you should check out Fight Commentary. I'm like, Fight Commentary? I'm like, yo, they're like, yeah, man, they got the man out stand up shit. And I'm like, word, so I, I didn't really, like, I, tell, I don't even be on YouTube like this. So I said, let me go see this shit. Then I look and I'm like, ah, oh, man, it was a nothing. I just see you making jokes and shit of some of the dudes, but not like really making bad jokes. You just make it point out some real facts. Like sometimes some of these motherfuckers had their hands down, things of that nature. But I always see it like, uh, fight styles or fighting expressions and why not? Some people like like Roy Jones. He used to fight with his hand, even though these motherfuckers are not professional. <laughs> I'm saying, but Roy Jones a professional. He was unorthodox. You know what I'm saying? That's what I always try to tell people. Kung fu techniques is kind of like unorthodox. Now I'm not saying if you train something, it should look like what you train, but not to the point where you restrict yourself. You know what I'm saying? It has to be done free. It's like a lot of people don't understand why. why. They really believe in this shit. They really believe that they get they're gonna draw power from the E chain of some crazy shit. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth, man. This is yo, I met people that if you don't study the E chain, and half the people that study Americans that study Bible don't even know that shit. I'm like, get the fuck out. They don't even know how to read the characters and they talking this bullshit to me. I'm like, yo, are you serious, dude? Do you even speak Mandarin or Cantonese motherfucker? You know what I'm saying? How you gonna sit up here and tell somebody some shit like that? You if you want to do that, I have my teacher was Chinese. He's from Beijing. And when, and when he taught me Bagua, he ain't never talked none of that bullshit. He would show me like body mechanics, certain things to do when you walk in a circle. And I used to ask him, I said, yo, don't you both study the E chain? He said, ah, that's bullshit. Now this is a Chinese dude telling me this shit. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, I'm like, so why y'all call it Bagua? You know what I'm saying? Like, he said, no, it's really rotating palm, but you know. Later on, the next generation, they came up with scholars and shit like that, like Sun Lutain, all those motherfuckers. Those niggas were scholars. You know what I'm saying? So they're going to do whatever to benefit them in that society during that time. It's, yo, it's like the game, man. It's like everybody runs game in every culture, man. You know what I'm saying? That's why I try to tell these people. I say, yo, Bagua, it has rotating, but you won't actually do it that way. You know what I'm saying? If I'm square, you're going to have to fight somebody square. What, what you want to take a posture and, and be like, hold on, I'm going to go, hold up, man. Let me get my sideways position, motherfucker. I'm like, yo, come on, man. That's that's not the way. I'd be like, yo, the palm strikes, you can punch, you can do whatever. That's why they call it change. I'd be like, yo, these dudes talk all this shit. They drive me crazy with this shit. They'd be like, oh, Bob was about change, but if it's about change, then why do they not follow the principle of change? The very thing that they're talking about is supposed to be complete liberation. So if you're following change, it's liberation. So how can you restrict yourself and look at somebody else and say they're doing it wrong? If you're following change, that's just his expression of change. That's all it is. Now you get his ass, you get his ass kicked. But he's trying to express change through his understanding, his comprehension. You know what I'm saying? That's the way I look at it. So when I see people talk, ask me about ball, it's all about palm strikes. It's not about palm strikes all the time, dude. If I do a move like this, maybe if I turn my hand this way, I can backhand you this way. If I turn, you know, you got this move they call considerable flower, high flower the leaf, where the hand come this way. And why not come inside? What if I turn, I could hook, I could hook you, depending on my positioning. If I turn this way, the same movement, I can grab you. If I'm close up, if I'm in from mid-range to short range, I can grab you and try to take you down. And why not? It's just like with Tai Chi, these dudes really don't get it, man. I'm not saying I'm no master, but I trained with a few good people that showed me an understanding of it. And they were Chinese. I, I keep it real. They ain't never taught none of this shit. They would just show me certain things. If you're getting close, how to ward off, what they call ward off and shit. When you're getting close, it's kind of like judo to me. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, they say, yo, get in and manipulate the guy's energy. You know, they talk those type of terms, but what they're saying is just redirect the guy's energy or his force. You know what I'm saying? But people love to use these fancy terms. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Be like, oh, you got to do, uh, what is it? Close the door, push the moon, and all this crazy shit, man. I'm like, come on, man. I read all that shit. That don't mean shit. All it means is you want to parry, parry a motherfucker, and you scratch him with the other hand. I'm like, come on, give me a fucking break. It's like the same shit with pasta. A lot of styles do the pasta and Wayne Chung, but a lot of Fucking bosses do that shit. I'm like, come on, man. It's nothing special. Everything is universal. But the problem is, like I said, what I was saying earlier, Jerry, these dudes don't really uh, actually engage in free fighting. That's all it is. If you're going to talk it, you got to, I mean, today anyway, I mean, we really don't necessarily need it. But if you're going to, a martial artist, in my opinion, and you want to fight, if you're talking fighting, then you got to fucking participate in this shit, man. You got to do what a fighter does, man. You can't just be, or just you just being a hypocrite. You just say, oh, okay, I'm, I, I show you this, I show you that, and why not? But when they get in 
a friend of somebody, they can't apply it. And that's what you see with the Bagua. That's why you, you go on YouTube right now, you won't see no fucking fights with Bagua. All you want to see is a bunch of fucking chain style forms, what they call dragon style. Well, you ain't style. Motherfuckers pissing with their hands and shit, but they don't really even train their hands. Yo, I done met so many people, man. I could talk to shit. That's why I just say they can come see me. I'd be like, I'll show them. I'd be like, yo, you can't do that shit on me if you if you ain't training how to fight with it. You know what I'm saying? You're just gonna get hurried up. <laughs> Why not? You yeah. know what I'm saying, yeah. Jerry? So I think it's better that these guys, I really hope they really open their eyes, man. Because it's a good thing, like MMA is a good thing because you can see they actually train. You go to MMA and I've been to a few. Ain't none of that talk shit, man. You you do your workout, and when you get in that cage, you throw them gloves on, that mouthpiece, then you get it in. You know what I'm saying? And then you know, people will correct you, they give you some pointers on how to what you should have done or how you should have been moving. And why not? They give you they give you pointers on your good good side and your bad side. You know what I'm saying? But kung fu, never, man. You can't go to any gym. Maybe a few. I could be wrong because this is a big world, but I haven't seen it. <laughs> I'm saying word up. I've been around. No thing. You you bog. Why you go? You go all through Beijing. You never gonna see that shit. You gonna see the motherfuckers in the parks and shit. That's about it. They ain't gonna do no fucking fighting, man. So don't even waste your time with that shit. Just like with the singy too. A lot of these motherfuckers doing all this rigid bullshit. I'm like, yo, that shit is not going to work in a fight, man. So why even train like that? I'm like, yo, it makes no sense. They be like, oh, you both look all rigid and like, like, and they, and you know, they shaking their hands like they got power or some shit. And people thinking, oh, that's fight gym. That's fight gym. Like, oh, are you fucking serious, dude? Put a pad in front of these motherfuckers and let them hit that pad. You see, you be surprised. You'll see they ain't got nothing. You be like, I done did it to a few cats. They thought they do. They form look nice. So I hold a pad. They like pussy cats hitting that shit, man. You like, yo, what the fuck is this? How you gonna stop somebody? You know what I'm saying? Somebody come at you real rough, they're gonna hurt you, man. So I just hope these guys open their minds, man, and be like, yo, I wanna, you know, if they if that's what they think, all these bar guys that follow you, if that's what they thinking, they need to really get up with people that don't do what they do. And that's the best way you can learn. Sometimes the Sifu or, they, or, or the La Shi, they teach the instructor, don't want to do that because they want to keep milking them for that money. <laughs> you know what I'm yep. So they're like, yep. yo, I'm this, yo, I show you the next palm change or the next form or whatever the case may be and a lot of the prearranged shit. I don't even waste my time with the prearranged shit. You know what I'm saying? I just do the forms. It's like an uh, exercise for me. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but when I, if I'm doing hitting the striking, I use pads and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Because I want to, you know, it's a good exercise. Keep you fit. That's another thing, too. Keep you fit. A lot of people are not fit, man. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know what to tell you, man. This shit is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's what I told you before. That's why I don't even fuck around too much no more on, on, online, man. There's too much bullshit. I just look at some of your guys. just be laughing when I see some of these shit, especially with that shit with Mad Dog Shoe whipping these guys' ass. I just be like, damn, son. It's, it's for dead it, man. And, yeah. and they be putting up all that money to fight. Yeah, like those yeah. stage fights too. There's a lot of stage fights too that you be seeing in kung fu. Yeah, guys wearing shit under their uniform. I'm like, what type of shit is this, man? I'm like, come on, man. They trying to promote like they doing some real kung fu. I'm like, come on, man. It just really pisses me off, man. When I look at that type of shit, and I'm not even Chinese, and I'm yeah. a black dude. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. saying like, yo, come on, man. I just want people to wake up. Man. Yeah, yeah. If you're gonna do yeah. kung fu, do it. Time to, yeah. it's 2021, man. We can't be doing the same shit. That's why it's, that's why we don't have a good outlet. That's why we, you don't have a good promotion because that's why MMA is where it's at now. If you had somebody, else, that was my goal. My goal was man, I stand. I just stopped, but I was almost getting there. But I stopped when I was promoting it. That was my whole shit to make it so big that people like, oh shit, these guys are fighting and bring more, get more skillful people. Because there's so many people that I know that practice Chinese martial arts throughout the world. Man, this shit is crazy. That's you, Tai Chi. <laughs> Say word. And why not? I don't know what it is. I'm not, you know, I do Tai Chi for more of a warm up. I don't know what the fuck it is with the Tai Chi, but motherfuckers love Tai Chi, man. You be like, God damn. They, and, and if you say anything negative about it, they have a fit, man. They be like, yo, you be like, yo, you just talking some logic, man. Logic. They be like, yo, no, you don't know what you're talking about. And you have to stand and you have to develop that chain and all this shit. I'm like, how the fuck you want to talk about developing chain? You can't even do 10 push-ups. I'm like, come on, son. Where the chi at? Know what I mean? It's all hypocritical, Jerry. Man, you got me on the roll on this shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I remember um one of these magazines. I don't remember which magazine, but it was a yeah. ma one of these magazines that used to talk kung fu, right? And 
the 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 magazine yeah. I remember one time was trying to justify why certain kung fu people or certain tai chi people didn't have a fit body, and they were like, "Well, actually, it's better to have a body that isn't fit in the upper body because A, B, C, and D." I remember reading it. I was like, "Huh, I don't think this is right." Ask a medical professional. Should you have upper body or no? It's like that. Like I remember reading that stuff. I'm like, "Wow, you guys really want to like you know like put even put pseudoscience on this." Man, that's some bullshit. I, like, yo, I, I learned when I first started sparring, like people that really fucking spar, the first shit you want to realize is your stamina. <laughs> Same. And then when you get hit, that's another factor. That takes away from your stamina and your endurance. I mean, when I first was doing that grappling shit, yo, it was like a whole different animal to me, man. I'm like, what the fuck? I was getting tired and shit. I had to like really change my diet and shit, man, because I used to eat a lot of fucked up shit. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? Then... When I started training with these dudes, it really opened my eyes to what stamina and endurance is a uh, physical conditioning. It's totally different than what the Chinese arts do. These dudes, man, you got to be physical, physically fit to be grappling with anybody, especially if you're grappling with somebody that's really fucking good, man. Like in judo, I mean, uh, Peter Storm and this dude used to get on top of me. I used to get tired and shit a lot. Then I started noticing my, my stamina started improving. And why not? I know what I'm saying because I was using, I wasn't using, in Kung Fu, I was using those muscles in a different way. But when you're on the ground, it's, you le- you you learning about muscles you never used before, man. You're like, what the fuck? You got to know, you got to how to move and transition and all that crazy shit. Understanding the cage and shit too. You know what I'm saying? When the guy got your back up on the cage and, he put, and he's applying force on you and shit, trying to take you down and shit, shit it's wild, man. And I ain't never really experienced that in Kung Fu. You know what I'm saying? That's what I think really opened my mind to a lot of different shit. Then I'm like, okay. And then it was easy to beat Kung Fu dudes because they wasn't used to like that type of that, that type of energy. You know what I'm saying? Most guys, you know, you come out and you hit them one time, they, they kind of like lose their spirit, man. That's fucked up. I've seen it happen a lot of times. It's another, a lot of people don't realize it's your spirit. Your spirit go, man, the physical ain't going to go nowhere else. I seen a guy get just tapped with a light jab to the chin. Bow! And the motherfucker didn't know how to react. He was like, oh, shit, He because he was shocked. He never been hit like that. And why not? And then I seen a guy get tapped and taken down with a, with a single leg. Boom! Just caught him. Wow! And the motherfucker was like, yo, he didn't know. It was like fish out of water, man. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's why I say a lot of these guys, man, they just got to um, get out there and get some experience. And that was my whole goal with, like, you know, man, that's why I, that's, another, that's why I always had a 10-second rule. And the man of stand, I say, yo, you get the guy on the ground. Cause my thing was, what if you in a street fight? You know what I'm saying? And I say, yo, we only gonna give you 10 seconds. So that was why the judge, my judges, I say, okay, we give them 10 seconds. If you get the guy on the ground, you got 10 seconds to do what the fuck you gotta do, but you gotta get back up. Because I wasn't trying to, it wasn't like a, a MMA type of event. You know what I'm saying? Because MMA is what it is, it's MMA. You know what I'm saying? So I respected that. So I said, okay, but Kung Fu, I said, I'm going to give you 10 seconds. You know what I'm saying? Because then I ain't want to see no ground fighting because then it really, it really looks shitty because, you know, these dudes don't got an eye clue of what to do, a transition, a mount, nothing. How to put their hooks in, none of that shit. These dudes is kind of lost on that. So I said, okay, we're going to do like 10 seconds. You get to the ground. We're going to see what you're going to do because I used to hear them say, oh, well, if I get to the ground, I know what to do, this and that. Look at it, man. 10 fucking seconds and some of these dudes couldn't even do shit. So I was just say, yo, why you talk to all that shit? You're telling me to put a rule in, so I gave you 10 seconds. You know what I'm saying? And when 10 seconds come, they couldn't do anything. You know what I mean? So it was everything was an experiment for me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And why not? I wanted to help people improve themselves and why not? So it kind of helped a lot of people, you know, get caught. Only the, like William, William Cavalli was like one of my top champions. He used to whoop ass all the time when he fought uh, Chris. See, that's the dude I was telling you, but he fought Chris. Chris was trying to take his championship and whatnot. I don't know. Everybody wanted William. You know what I'm saying? I used to, you know, he was like the, my main feature in Man of Stand. You know what I'm saying? So he used to win all the fights. I mean, he fought this Wayne Chung dude. I forgot this dude. We used to call him a little yip man and whatnot. I, I think it's up there. You going on. Um, I think Phil Redman got his fight up there. And shit, you go on his page, you see it. He fought Little Yip, man. He never, he almost got William, but he didn't get him. You know what I'm saying? Everybody used to try to get William, man. William used to do, before he went to into Muay Thai and why not, he used to do, uh, what's that shit called? Sandbar. It was a style that he that, that he learned from um, Sifu Ralph Bay and why not. So this dude, he used to, kind of like a, he, he collected style, Kung Fu with different shit in it and why not. And they used to get, they used to fight though. I give it to him. 
them dudes was never scared of fighting. She liked William because William was, was more of a showman. He, he had skill, though. And why now he's even more dangerous. He, he, he went on to fight like some professional shit now, like in them Muay Thai matches and shit like that. So, so there's a few dudes that fought in like some MMA type of uh, arenas. Had uh, Kelly Johnson. Yeah, I think we can beat him too. But Kelly Johnson, he's from Salt Lake Lee, Salt Lake City. And why not? He fought in a rooftop fight against uh, Daniel Jackson. And why not? They probably had that. If you look on YouTube, you probably see that shit up on there. That's the only. I think they got that fight up there. It's a rooftop fight. I had motherfuckers fighting on top of the roof because we said, fuck it, we, gonna, we can't go to Hong Kong, so we're going to do our own rooftop fights. So I started doing that shit, but then, you know, I, I had to chill because police, you know what I'm saying? I was getting people was calling this shit. They thought it was like some real, real fight type shit, Jerry. I was like, yo, I said, I can't be doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? I did it like maybe twice or three times and shit. Then I went back to doing that man of stand up for a little while. Then I just stopped doing it all together, man. I just got tired, man. And why not? It's like, yo, people was like, like some people wasn't they, they say they're coming, then they get scared and shit. They then they go to the the, the, the uh, normal tournaments where they just do the form and they do the little light bullshit fighting. They just want to feel like they're a champion, you know what I mean? So that, that's about it, though. That's all I could think of right now. I mean, it's like it's the same since back when I was doing this shit, man. I ain't really see anybody really improving in Kung Fu, man. It's the same shit. That's why I just be laughing that the new footage I be seeing and shit. I'm not laughing to be mean and nothing. This is like, I just said, shake my head. I just like, damn, any dudes ain't improved yet. So you see a lot of commentary shit about with different people and shit. They be like, yo, look at this, look at that. And But the one thing I do want to point out is when it comes to these style versus style fights, what I never understood is with the Kung Fu guys, they don't wear boxing gloves. So I don't know why the fuck you're going to put on some boxing gloves, put in a mouthpiece and why not, and go fight. If it's going to be style versus style, okay, let the, if the guy is a kickboxer or a Muay Thai guy or whatever, if that's what they do, they're used to that way of fighting. So it's kind of like you come into the battlefield unprepared. You know what I'm saying? You're going to put on gloves. I seen one shit with the, with the uh, Bagua guy fighting one of the Muay Thai guys, and he puts on boxing. He didn't even know how to punch with the shit. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, it's kind of it's kind of stupid. It's like, yo, if you're going to lose, go out on your shield doing what you do. Don't go out on your shield trying to do what the next man do. You know what I'm saying? So that's one thing I always wanted to, wanted to say because I always see this style versus style shit. Or you see the Wayne Chun guys, they putting on fucking 16-ounce boxing gloves and trying to get in there and bang out with the dudes. Not that it will matter because I've seen videos without the boxing gloves on and they get in there and they get knocked the fuck out. And I'm like, damn, and it's sad, man, because I would think, I think they say that style is created by a woman. So I'm like, yo, I would think they'll have good footwork and they know how to angle their opponent. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and, you know, they both that they got pretty good hand techniques, but it's like the way they applying it is not for today's uh, 21st century fighters, I should say. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? The way they, they, they stand in there like this, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I don't watch, because, you know, I only say Wing Chun because I see so many Wing Chun clips, man. I've been seeing so many, man. I'm like, God damn it. Any of these motherfuckers going to knock somebody out? I'm like, yo, come on, man. You see the Yip Man movies. I mean, they famous for that shit. Like, they did, like, uh, four Yip Man movies, man. And you trying to tell me nobody knows how to fight with that shit? Like, come on, man. But I can't even talk about Bob Walker. Bob Walker can't even compare. They don't even got nobody. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, come on, man. It's just sad, man. So, you know, what can I tell you, Jerry? Shit is crazy, man. And why not? Do you remember the first Man of Stand-Up event? you did do you remember sort of the feelings behind it some of the like the the internal funny stuff do you could you tell us more about that man yo i did it because it was funny because when i first did it i did it with uh the very very first one i did was at richard Garcia place and why not uh phil redman student he was all wing chong fighters and why not most of them and, and they was fighting a lot of uh at that time, what was it? Yeah, okay. At that time, there was MMA fighters. Matter of fact, it was kind of funny because it was uh this guy named Monster Boy Chris. Not the one that fought William, but another dude named Chris. We used to call him Monster Boy. Uh, and Little Redman had a lot of Wayne Chung guys. Super Rudy was the, was, the, uh, was the judge at that time. It was funny because, you know, at that time, it was a lot of, um, how can I say, a lot of excitement for that shit because I wanted to see for myself, because, you know, Philip Redman, you know, his style is known to be like some type of uh, 
the real Wing Chun style and shit like that and why not. And, you know, <laughs> I mean, it was interesting because the way they used to fight. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you know, he, he did all right. His students did all right, man. And why not? It was just different. You know what I'm saying? But then after that, what you were referring to is like when I had all the motherfuckers in there fighting from different from different um branches. Because when Will when Sifu Philip Redman did his did his brought his students to fight, then that's when it started kind of blowing up for me. All these people started wanting to compete in this shit, man. I was like, what the fuck? I mean, cats in the neighborhood, like you know, people that made up their own styles and shit. It was fucking crazy, dude. It was like a whole bunch of people, like the shit. I think you got one of the great. When I had the ring and all that shit, you see so many people in there. It was so many people. I didn't expect it to blow up like that, man. I put a, I did a, I was do these flyers like Shaw Brothers and shit. I would look at a Shaw Brother. You remember like the old Shaw Brother flyers and shit with the Kung Fu guys, like Shaolin Executioner, uh, Born Invincible. I used to do flyers like that. I said, I'm going to do my shit different. And, and, it, and it attract people, man. And people say, yo, I say, uh, King of New York. I used to do shit like that. And man, and I did the uh, Kung Fu King of New York tournament. That's the one you referring to. Oh my God, everybody came out, man. There was so many people, man. It's like this dude named Robin. I don't know if you got his fight, but um, it's a tall Tycoon dude, dude. He's, he was ricked, man. He was just whooping. Yo, Wayne Chan was getting destroyed that day, man. I mean, there was so many people fighting, man. The guy that you was talking about, I forgot this dude. I think his name was Bobby Brown or something. I know he's on the channel. You had, I seen you do a commentary on it. He was fighting. He was jumping around. He's fighting this other dude, this karate guy, and why not? But he was really a a, a beginner uh, jujitsu guy, and why not? He would take the the Wing Chun guy. Now, I can't remember the goddamn video, but I know it was it was one of the videos you had on it. I remember because it, it was like my second time I did the tournament, and why not? And that's when he was in. I forgot what we called it. It was a funny fight. It was going back and forth, back and forth. But they gave it to the to, to the karate guy. You know what I'm saying? But the Wayne Chang guy was doing his doing his thing, but you know, he was getting taken down and shit like that. It was just wild, man. Even Nat Neasy, and, and that fight with uh, Nat Neasy, he fought in that fight too, when he fought against Ben Hill. And when that was supposed to be the main event, because they had some type of personal beef or whatever the case may be. And you know, it was cool because they was going to handle it in the ring. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And why not? So it was like Muay Thai, we had it, we had a title, Muay Thai versus Bagua, you know, and, you know, it didn't work out good for Ben, but, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So it was wild, man. I could go on and on. It was so many different fights, man. And when I got so many tapes of fights I never even put up, man, because I was doing this shit for a long time. I had so many fights with people from different areas, from New Jersey. Man, they were from everywhere, man. Like Connecticut. They was coming from everywhere. <laughs> and why just to come to this little gym to fight. And why not? That's why I'm, I'm going to try to find a link. And I probably send it to you. I think I got it on my daily, my daily um channel. I forgot they call that shit. It was one of them the mom um, channels where they you upload videos and shit. I think I got it up there. And when that's when I put it on that when they had me on TV, they wanted me to do a discovery. They said, Oh, we want you to do a uh feature your 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 tournament on 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 discovery channel. I'm like, all right, fuck it. You know what I'm saying? So I had it there, so that was crazy fight. You had this dude named Renson, he was like Ben Hill student. And why not? And he beat up my student. Well, he knocked out one of my students. And shit. It was some crazy ass with an overhand right and some shit like that. So the craziest shit I remember, damn, I'm trying to remember, was the fight between uh, DJ. I don't know. I know he probably follow you. DJ uh, versus this Taekwondo dude, African dude. We used to call him African Taekwondo. And why not? He knocked DJ out because DJ used to be the middleweight champion. Cause I used to have weight classes, you know what I'm saying? I used to have motherfuckers come there. You had to get on the scale. I didn't, I didn't take your word if you said you weighed something. I put you on the scale, you know what I'm saying? So I had weight classes. I that's another thing a lot of people don't realize. I had medical there. I had an acupuncture guy there. I had a, a dude that do the Chinese massage. The whole shit in the in the scene. So it wasn't like I was just having a tournament and somebody got hurt. They got taken care of. You know what I'm saying? And why? Because I was scared. I didn't want to get sued. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I was like, fuck it. So I try to make sure I had professional people there. And when I had an ER guy there that was professional, that was certified, the whole nine, even though they was fighting with no ring and shit. So that's the whole purpose of having these people that's in the medical field to be there. You know what I'm saying? In case somebody really got hurt. You know what I'm saying? But thank God nobody got hurt. A few people got knocked out. But, you know, they got back on conscience and they was able to go home. <laughs> I was saying okay and shit. So this shit was crazy, man. And why not? 
Yeah. I still get emails from people. That, yeah, go um, ahead. Go ahead. I said, no, I said, I still get emails from cats want me to do this damn man of stand up shit, man. But it's pandemic, man. I'm like, yo, yo, cats is bugging. <laughs> you know what I'm saying it's a pandemic right now. I'm just chilling right now. And why not just do this crazy bull? I, I personally think it's bullshit, but you know, I'm just going to get through it. And why not? And hopefully, then I probably come back because I always wanted to be a fight for mode. I always been wanted to be that, but in Kung Fu, I said, fuck it, I'm going to do Kung Fu. I might as well try to make money. That's because a lot of cats in Kung Fu ain't making no money doing Kung Fu. Mm-hmm. Then why not? No, if I was, I wouldn't be having to do my job now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying There's no money in Kung Fu, man. You no, know I'm saying I tried it, but that was my whole idea to be like a Don King of the Kung Fu world. You know what I'm saying? And why not? And I almost got, I almost got this. I put it that way. I had, I, I got the eye of USC. I put it that way. They were trying to come after me for a while. And why not? So I was like, shit, over some bullshit logo shit they try to get me with. And why not? Which my logo don't look nothing like they shit. You know what I'm saying? So that shit got handled. I had to get a lawyer for that shit. And then I, I handled that shit. So other than that, that's how I knew I was getting there. Because come on, man. I'm from the urban community. And UFC come watching me what I do. Like that shit was crazy, man. And why not? Other than that, everything been cool and shit. You know what I mean? And why not? Just been chilling, just living life, man. And you know, as you get older, you just get wiser, man. You don't do dumb shit like when I was when I did man, I still I was do I used to do a lot of dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? And why not now when I look back on it and shit? You know what I'm saying? Now I'm a little bit more wiser, so I just be chilling, man. I just be like trying not to get into no negativity. I used to have cats come at me all the time with bullshit, man. Shit I ain't had nothing to do with. Just come at me. And say, oh, I just want to mention my name. Oh, yo, BT, you just said this. I ain't never said none of that shit. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't be online like that. So I'd be like, yo, if people got problem with me, I'd always say, just come see me. So I don't see how that was a problem if I talk about somebody. If you got a problem with me, come see me. It ain't like I'm hard, hard to find in New York. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, just come see me. Just like I'm talking to you. I'm like, yo, I'm at the same location where I'm talking to you now. Been here for over 20-something years. You know what I'm saying? So cats wanted to touch me or wanted to touch hands with me. They could have came with the camcorder, the whole shit. They, well, I'm going to run out the park. Oh, no, I don't want to fight. Come on, dude. Shit is crazy. But now I'm older now, so I just be like, whatever, man. I'm like, yo, I just be chilling. I just Now I just look at some of the clips and, you know, I'll be watching your shit now because I ain't never knew nothing about your shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know about your channel. See, that's the funny shit, man. I used to watch your channel because I said, oh, let me watch the Mandarin. I think you used to teach Mandarin on this on one of your channels. I didn't know you was the same person. You know what I'm saying? So I used to watch your shit on my free time, learn a little bit of Mandarin and shit. You know, Ni Hao Ba and all that shit you used to put out there and shit. You used to break the shit down. So I said, oh, this is a good channel. It's this other dude, too, this black dude. This motherfucker, he, he must know a whole bunch of languages and shit. So I used to watch you and his channel. Then I'm like, oh, shit, then I... Put two and two together. I'm like, oh, so this is fight commentary. Then I, oh, this is the same dude. You know what I'm saying? Shit was crazy, man. But I tell you, catch used to hit me up. Like, yo, man, check out this video. I'm like, all right. Then I look. I'm like, yo, that's my shit. Then I look at this shit. I'm like, yo, then, because I remember, I, I forgot which one it was. I think it was the Ben Hill shit. That's the first one I seen. And why not? It was a while back, though, when I was at work. I looked at it. I said, I don't give a fuck. I said, yo, I don't even use that shit. I was looking at it. I said, okay. It was like, yo, you, but you wasn't giving, you wasn't dissing him. Now you was like telling the truth. So I said, yo, what the fuck you send me this shit? All he's saying is what really happened. You know what I'm saying? And why not? And then he had his characters. I think when you look at Ben's shirt, the characters on the shirt is, is incorrect. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I remember this Chinese dude hit me up at my job and told me, he said, yo, that's wrong. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it ain't my shirt. So I didn't give a fuck. <laughs> ain't word. But other than that, your channel was good, man. I used to laugh at the shit, the shit you used to post up. And shit, and why not? Especially about the fights. So people couldn't get upset. That's why I tell you, you can't change people's way of thinking, Jerry. That's why I say I stopped doing all that. I used to. That's what I mean. When you get older, you get wiser. Some people, they just want to be stuck in that way of thinking, man. It's nothing you can do about it, man. You know what I'm saying? That's why I don't get upset. I said, I don't go fuck. That's why I told you, you use all the clips you want. I don't use them shit. So fuck, I'm going to do with it. You know what I'm saying? You want to, if you promote and shit, promote. Because I used to be like you, have all that energy to promote shit. Now I just don't give a fuck. Pop my ankle. <laughs> I'm saying, I'm just like, whatever, man. I just be chilling. I just take care of my family. Work out with a few dudes. When I, I don't even really teach martial arts like that no more, man. She got me so upset with Bob. Why? I just be like, whatever, man. And why someone want to learn it, I say, yo, I show it to him, but I tell him, it ain't no mystical shit, man. You know what I'm saying? It's like an exercise to me. It's like shadow boxing. That's it. You know what I mean? If you want to fight, you got to mix it up with people. You know what I mean? Simple as that. And why yeah. not? 
And um, Shifu Novel, it's awesome that like, to hear some of the behind the scenes about Man of Standard, like the fact that there was, you know, doctors there, there were people there to to like take care. It showed how much, as much as, you know, it seemed like, okay, it was like an underground thing, but you still put a lot of consideration into making it safe. So that's awesome to hear like some of that behind the scenes stuff. I had to, man, because I was like, yo, you got to remember, I'm a black dude doing underground fights. So I said, yo, I, and I had connections with people. So I knew certain people I used to train. I had I knew dudes that I, that was my classmate that was into the medical medicine field. So I said, yo, can you come? They would they would do voluntarily. So I like, yeah, they had everything, man. First aid, we had all that shit, man. And when I had the dudes with the acupuncture there, motherfuckers getting free acupuncture treatment, the whole shit. I, at the same time, I was kind of like exposing them to the Chinese medicine side and why not. You know what I'm saying? So people was like, oh, shit. Like they was getting urged and shit instead of taking Red Bull. These motherfuckers taking like, you know, James Cena to get the energy, shit like that. I was showing them like, we'll urge shit. At the same time, a lot of people don't know that because what they see is the the uh, the excitement side, the, the part where I'm just trying to make it more entertaining. You know what I'm saying? And why not? It's like some people are like, oh, you're talking to Mike, but that's the whole purpose of it. The whole pur- I was the MC. So if you're an MC, that's what you're supposed to do. You got to hype people up. That's how, that's why if you look at most of them shits, when you look at the first one, you see it wasn't that many people there. But then if you look at some of the other, later on the years, more people start coming there. I mean, people, white people was coming to my shit. That people that, that, that you would think that never step in the hood, man. They're like, yo, they would come like, nah, I want to come see the fight. They had their kids fighting in that motherfucker, man. I like, yo, so I started getting too, like, you know, I had it. I used to do a lot in Manhattan. That's what I used to do it because I had a big gymnasium in Manhattan, but these guys started getting greedy, man. I was like, yo, what the fuck? They start seeing because they used to do a karate tournament and they ain't had nobody come to their shit. I did my shit. Everybody came to my shit. I had so many people, I had to turn them away. You know what I'm saying? But that's, I have to give respect to William because William was like a draw for me because that's why I used to treat him right, because I said, like, yo, William used to beat up guys, and he did it in, in, in entertaining fashion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So people like, oh, shit. So they want the fight. So everybody wanted to get him, or they wanted to get DJ. And DJ is another dude that used to fight. He used to fight the middleweight, so they, would, they always wanted to get this dude, man. Cats was coming after him, trying to get him. So, yo, believe me, there's so much footage I got that's not even up there. It's just it's a whole bunch of shit we used to do. And why not? Cats used to come, used to come, and then, you know, people start hearing it word of mouth. And they're like, oh shit, this man of stand up, man. You gotta go fight at this man of stand up and shit. I guess how USC started hearing about it. Cause I, I heard that cats was hearing about it in different states. And I'm like, yo, I just started this shit as a hobby, man. I just did the shit. And I said to myself, well, let me try this shit out. And I start, you know, I'm a gamer. So I like to play a game. So I was thinking about how I could do this shit like in a game way, like, you know, and I say, no one, I, I've been to regular tournaments, man. And, they, and it's just as boring. It's like an auction. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They be like, yo, hey, oh, go to this line right here, form division. Go to here, weapon division. It's kind of whack. You know what I'm saying? So I still make my shit entertaining. You know, I have jokes. I had I had food there, too. I had a cater there. A lot of people don't know that. I had, you know, I had Spanish food there. The lady that cooked Spanish food and all that shit. So I was making money on that side, too. You know what I'm saying? So people can, can eat. I didn't let nobody drink. Now, some people bring their own drunk, they own drinks there, but that's one no. But I never so, serve no alcohol. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I served food there. And when I had somebody that cooked, I had a cook there, the whole shit. So nobody really see between the behind the scenes of shit. You know what I'm saying? What they see is just the fights. That's why she used to be so packed. And plus, it was just the environment. The way I had it organized, the way I had it, it was like a real fucking underground type of fight, man. That's why they wanted to put the shit on TV. You know what I'm saying? And why not? They're like, yo, we got to put this shit on TV. I got to see. I'm going to see that link. I'm not fine. You see what I'm talking about? It was just like that. It was like an underground shit. You know what I'm saying? The only Kung Fu underground shit in New York. Nobody was doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? And I, like I said, I have to give respect to Peter Storm because he gave me the idea because he used to do them the, before MMA was, was kind of, I don't know if it's, it's legal now, I think, in New York, but before it wasn't. You know what I'm saying? So we used to do underground fights. Because Sean Obasi, I don't know if you know Sean Obasi. John Obasi used to fight a lot in the underground. He was the Wayne Chung guy. They used to fight a lot in the, in the UCF and why not. So he was like kind of like a champion there, knocking cats out and shit. And why not? So that gave me the idea. Then he, then he started coming to check out my shit. You know what I'm saying? So that's how I got, you know, kind of 
very more known with this shit because a lot of people start people that that was into the underground scene start coming to my shit to check it out to come watch it shit like that and why not shit was crazy so it was fun though i ain't gonna front i had a good time doing this shit i mean it was all positivity that's another thing people don't realize it was more for to help people get their skill up you know what i'm saying to, to help them improve themselves that's my whole goal was to help them have a good time people the, the spectators can watch the shit and they can hear about a style, not just fucking forms, man. You know what I'm saying? Be like, yo, okay, we all know, like, in a fight, it's going to look ugly anyway. I don't know what people be thinking. They, they think it's going to look pretty and shit. It's going to look like they see in a Shaw Brother movie. Nah, man. It's not going to look like that. The whole idea was so somebody can actually say they stepped in the rain. To me, that takes courage. A lot of people don't got courage to step in the rain to face another man that's trying to bash you or punch you in your face or take you down. You know what I'm saying? So you got to have courage and spirit. So my whole thing is to, my teachers say develop the spirit. So that was the main thing. And Because there was a lot of people that didn't have no spirit. Man, I seen one dude came in, he, he punched in the air and shit. I'm like, yo, you got to hit the opponent, man. <laughs> I'm saying, word. That's what I mean by lack of experience. Some dudes, they gained the experience through man upstanding. Because I remember it's a tiger going, hung out of this nigga. He was punching the air. We were like, yo, hit the opponent. <laughs> and why not? You know what I'm saying? So he learned through the years, though. I, I think I got that. But we was like, yo, what the hell? He was like, yo, he was hitting the air, man, because his teacher, his seafood, taught him like that, man. So a lot of some seafoods was upset about it because they were getting exposed, man. They were taking these people money, not teaching them shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Shit was fucked up. And when I think about it, man, that shit really kind of ignored me a little because I was like, yo, that's fucked up, man. You gonna, And, you know, the guys just come in. I would, I'm not the type of dude to try to talk about the guy's teacher. So I would be like, yo, you should just, you know, I say it in, like, you know, a nice way. I'd be like, yo, you should try to find, like, a gym or something, man. You know, work with somebody, you know. You did all right. I used to give them, you know, encourage these motherfuckers. Because, I I mean, you don't beat a man that's already been beat down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I would say, yo, I try to encourage these dudes. I'd be like, yo, just try to, you know, get skills and shit like that. Like, even when William came, he he got he got real good. He was already, he was already a talented dude and shit, but... When he started fighting more and more, you could see the difference. Through the years, he just got better and better. And why not? Then it came to the point he ain't need to fight no man or stand no more. The motherfucker, I, I used to tell him, I say, yo, you're you getting good, man. You know what I'm saying? Get your skills up and start fighting other motherfuckers. But he always wanted to be a champion. That dude, man, I remember when I first met, that's all he used to talk about. He want to be a champion and shit. And why not? I used to always tell him to go to boxing because there's more money in that shit. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't think he would do good in boxing. But, you know, everybody has their path, man. You know what I'm saying? Or what they want to be in this world. That's how I look at it. But it was cool. And why not? When it comes to man of stand up, I think that, of course, you had imitators. People start coming after me and shit. I was like, come on, man. Everybody know I first do to do that shit. And I start seeing all this other shit coming up. I mean, I, I don't hate on other people doing their thing. That's what they do. And why not? I seen all this other shit coming, all these other type of underground fight type shit. So I was like, oh, come on, man. They even had this one, the man of stand up in Hawaii or some shit called man of stand up Hawaii. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I'm like, yo, come on, son. And I'm like, yo, why you want? I, that's one thing I hate when people try to bite off for of somebody. That's like me trying to bite off of your shit, Jerry. I'm going to say, oh, you got fight commentary. I'm going to say, oh, my shit is called fight talk. No, I'm saying? I'm like, come on, man. That shit sucks, man. People just need to be created on their own, man. You know what I'm saying? That's what I hate about that shit. Because, you know, people want to bite, man. That's why you got to... That's what I learned. You got to trademark your shit, copyright your shit. When you put an idea out here in the universe, somebody's going to try to grab it. You know what I'm saying? That's one thing I learned. You know what I'm saying? Shit is crazy, man. And why not? Yeah. And I will really emphasize something you said about pressure testing, which is people don't realize there's two, there's two things about pressure testing that's so important. It, one... You have to learn the different ways that your body responds when you get hit, man. It's not easy, right? That's the first thing. Second of yeah. all, you have to break those civilized responses you have and actually be able to hit someone with power. Like, I, I grew up fighting, right? I, I, I got into a lot of, like, schoolyard yeah. fights, street fights and stuff. But I will tell you, even then, there's a reason I threw a lot of kicks because it was, it was less – personal punching someone connecting with your fist man and especially in the face that was hard so i rarely ever hit someone in the face when i fought like in the streets or, yeah. or in a school you know yeah. i would chop sometimes but i would rarely yeah. like do a fist to the face man so like even now yeah. you know, i started sparring again last year just getting back into things okay. again i still had to like flatten that button i was i'm just being honest i still sometimes be like yeah. oh, i don't want to hit him in the face so like that 
takes a long time to get rid of that like hesitation like you said your fighter some of the fighters hitting air that's not a joke man that like takes some people i am one of those that like, it takes a while to flatten that and then the other side of the coin which is like every time you spar there's probably one hit that mm-hmm. you're like whoa i've never been hit like that before whoa i need to get used to that right that's why it's so important to spar and pressure test because like um no getting doubt. punched in the eye from a different angle will hurt a different way getting punched in the jaw from a different angle will get hurt, will hurt you in a different way getting hit in the rib from a different angle will hurt you a different way like that's how you build up the conditioning and the stamina like Shifu Novell said to really be able to like actually implement what you're training now you're right you're 100 right man I mean that's just, it comes with, like, you know, I guess, like, with, with practice through the years and whatnot, and you start to develop. In my opinion, I think, I never used to like to get hit at all, to be honest. So it took me a while to break out of that fear factor of being hit and whatnot. And then after a while, the more you spar, the more comfortable you get, what I should say, confidence within yourself and whatnot. That's what helps. That's what helped me, I know. And whatnot. after a while, I wasn't scared to get hit anymore. I mean, I started really learning how to, I kind of embraced it after a while. And why someone trying to hit me, I try to find, do like, you know, six their ways of how to move out the way and try to make them look stupid. You know what I'm saying? That's that's when you get confident. That's when you start getting comfortable with that shit. Then you be like, all right, I can do this. I can do that now. But, but in the beginning, man, I don't get what nobody say. I don't get what instructors say. You want to be fair because you never, you never experienced that before. You know what I'm saying? Then when you experience the shit and then you learn how to manipulate your fear and why not to work for you, then it's a whole different ball game. A whole different reality is open to you, man. A whole different perspective on how to do shit and why not. That's when I started, like, like you said, I used to love to kick. I used to do hook kicks, roundhouse kicks, all that type of shit came later after I got over the field being hit. But before that, I was I would throw it from long range type shit. <laughs> like you said, like I'd be putting the shit out like head and like, you know, I, I wasn't really. And that another thing too, your mindset changes too. Then, you know, I, I was more focused on getting in on the person. If they fucked up, I make them pay for it. Boom, like that. And when I'm like, yo, I'm about to get out of here because I think my battery is going low. When you was talking, <laughs> it said my battery was going mad low, but I enjoy talking to you though, man. And why not? It's yeah. just, Definitely. Guys, um, this was Shifu Novel Bell. This was Shifu Novel Bell. Um, let's definitely Shifu, let's do another talk like this too, man. This was awesome. Now, now I like talking to you, man. You you down to earth, man. I I mean, you know, I could talk for days about what you watch and whatnot, but you're right, man. I hope that we do another one, man. Just keep doing what you're doing, man. Yeah. I think what you're doing is good for the uh martial art community, man. And whatnot. That's the way I look at it. I mean, I looked at all your videos, and what, like I said, I put two in remember I told you. Even with, with, with the talking how to speak Mandarin. <laughs> you know That's right. You get at that shit too, man. So I, I appreciate you, man. All right. So much respect to you, man. And make yeah. you know you get everything in life. Yeah. All right? Yeah. Peace and guys, blessings. Shifu Novel Bell will be back. And um maybe when this is this pandemic's over, dude, I'll come visit New York. We'll 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 have a little in person yeah, talk man, or something. Know. No doubt. You welcome anytime, man. Remember that. You welcome anytime, man. I'm, I'm just a New Yorker. I've been here. I told you, I'm still here after 20 something years. I'm still in the same location, my brother. Mm-hmm. All right. Peace awesome. and blessings. Definitely. Oh, awesome, guys. We will talk soon, man. Fight Commentary Breakdowns out. Peace.